Okay, so how do you basically get to to name the the benzene compounds? So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Okay, just a few rules. So you already know that the benzene structure or aromatic compound, hydrocarbon, is a six carbon ring. Don't mind the drawing. Okay. And then we expect to have a double bond. Three double bonds. Okay. So essentially we expect that there should be a hydrogen at each point. Okay. So this is called benzene. Take note of that. So in summary, just one thing that I would want you to know even beforehand is that um, as a parent name, we call it benzene. Now, when it comes as a prefix, I will explain the cases where it becomes as a prefix. It's called phenyl. Okay, very important. Take note of phenyl. Okay. So, in a case where we are considering it to be a parent structure, we call it benzene. We are considering it to be a prefix, we call it phenyl. Or as a substituent, meaning that there is so you only consider it to be a prefix in a case where it is connected to a, a what a chain which is having a functional group. Okay, but if you don't have any functional group attached to it, take it as benzene. So let's begin with a simple example where we have nitrogen dioxide attached to it. So in this case the nitrogen dioxide is called nitro so it will be nitro benzene as simple as it is remember i talked about an example where we had methyl being attached to it okay which was called toluene in such a case it is methyl benzene okay very simple right let's move let's move so that's the first true when the substance name is placed when you've got a substitute substituted aromatic compound Whatever is a substituent there is taken as a prefix. And then, what about a case where you have two of them? Just like we did under the normal structures, you take them, give them positions. Okay. So it would be one, two, and then of course, dibromo, benzene. As well so you see that the parent name remains benzene but we're giving positions to whatever is attached right very important very important but it would also be yeah very very important to take note of that anyway so when different substituted groups are attached to the aromatic compounds so when you have got different ones attached what happens the substituted of the base compound is assigned one and the direction is chosen to get the lowest possible combination. You understand what that means. So if you have the nitro still at that point, and then you get to have the chlorine attached on this other point, and then you get to have a methyl group there. So these are three different groups. So one is nitro, one is chloro, one is methyl. So how do you get to the order? So you need to count in a way that you get the lowest possible combination. Okay? So, preferably, we'll start from a case, the part where we've got two groups. So, I'll start from the bottom. So, one, two, because we know that we we'll have a lower combination if we start from the bottom. So, that we have one, two, three, and four. So, we we'll have one, two, and four. If we had started from the top, we would have one, and then a three, and a four. So, one, two, and four are better. So, and then of course we need to alphabetize whatever we have. So, we have chloro. It's coming first. So, two chloro. And then we have one methyl. And then we have four nitro. And then the parent structure itself is benzene. 
very very important then we can move a bit and look at the other few examples So let's consider a case where we have CH2, CH2, CH3 attached at a certain point. So if you look at that RQ attached, this is propyl. So equal you just name it as it is. There is no functional group part of that, so it will just be propyl and then the parent name benzene remains. Okay. So you've seen that no matter how long the chain you've attached it to except it comes longer than the the six carbons if it is shorter than that it is something something different okay unless there's a functional group if if a chain attached if a chain of carbons attached is shorter than six carbons or sh is six or less except there's a functional group first when you take the benzene to be phenyl or a prefix <laughs> okay so let's look at uh, the use of phenyl so consider a case where we would have several let's have several what yeah several things attached to this maybe let's consider case where we have heptane attached so if you have this one attached to heptane so you know that heptane is an alkane with seven sides right how many sides are these one two three one two three four five six and then Okay, not necessarily so accurate. Let me know something like that. And then, okay, so that's a seven-sided shape. So it's longer than the the benzene, right? So in such a case, this one will be taken as a prefix. So it will be phenyl. And then you know that's uh, that's a cycloat, heptane, because of seven sides. Okay, so I'm just giving you an idea to say. You only take this as a prefix in a case where it is connected to a longer chain of carbon than it is. Okay. Look at another example where we have a longer chain CH3, CH, CH2, CH2, CH2. CH2. I want it to end up to eight. <clears throat> so one, two, three, four, five, six. Can add CH2 and then CH3. So sorry, there's not enough space there. But all the same, we have an octane attached to the phenyl group. So this is shorter. So you look at now, you need to look at the position where it is attached. So it's attached on carbon two. So it will be two phenyl and then octane right so that's one thing you cannot so benzyl as a prefix is taken as phenyl okay and then as a parent structure we just call it benzene okay <coughs> now finally there are a few things that i would want you to take note of that are very useful under the naming of uh, these aromatic compounds so if you've got two so if you've got two things attached, there are prefixes like ortho, meta, and para. Okay. So when two things have been attached and then they are adjacent or next to each other. Okay. 
what that means is let's say you've got bromo attached at that point so on the same double bond again so they are next to each other so you can take that as one comma two or next to each other in a benzene ring when naming instead of putting one comma two you can actually just say ortho okay and then di bromo so the ortho indicates that these were next to each other okay that's a special way of naming the, the benzenes so di bromo benzene of course and then for meta there is a spacing so if there is a gap let's say we add it there that one would be meta di bromo because there's a space in between and then where they are opposite one on top one down that one is called para okay so this is one comma four one comma three and then one comma two which are next to each other so this is a special naming that is also part of the so in case where they ask you to where they give you these and then ask you to draw understand what author stands for meta means okay very very important so even when they just give you different uh, structures may consisting of two substrates for example you may have ortho and then chloro chloronitro so this indicates that these were next to each other in the benzene structure so ortho chloronitro so it means you have maybe on just on that top part you have the, the nitro and then the chloro on this other part that's what it means when you say ortho okay so we now understand the use of the naming of the different benzene structures okay and then of course i will just need to mention of an, an aniline which is also a common benzene structure this is a case where you have nh2 or a minor group attached at a certain point so it's called aniline aniline i don't know how you can pronounce it and then there's a case where you may have uh, if you've got an alcohol there at that point it becomes uh, phenol an alcohol right okay so those becomes the pine structures in those different cases and this basically are the basic IUPAC nomenclature of the aromatic compounds. So hopefully as you get to encounter them under organic chemistry, you'll be able to remember.